Aboard Chesterfield the Third, and today I'm doing paid reviews, and this is for Christian. Hi Archie, I'm a big fan from Austria, and of course, I'm always watching your channel. As I agree in most things you are saying, I want you now to review my little collection. I'll send a PayPal donation via PayPal, and a few pictures of my watches. My collection. Number one, a Jaeger Cultra Master Control, circa 1996. This was a present from my parents and my first luxury watch. Number two, a Jaeger Le Coultre Memovox 70s Tonneau was my first watch I bought myself. Number three, a Jaeger Le Coultre Memovox Speedboat. Number four, Jaeger Le Coultre Memovox Snowdrop. Number five, Jaeger Le Coultre Polaris 2. Number six, Jaeger Le Coultre Master Marine Deep Sea. Number seven, Jaeger Le Coultre Master Marine HPG Barracuda. Number eight, Jaeger Le Coultre Deep Sea Alarm Tribute Version. Number nine, Zenith El Primo 1970s was a present from my ex boss. Number ten, Vintage Navi Timer Vintage 60s present from my parents. Number eleven, Brightling Chrono from the 50s from my grandfather. Number twelve, an IWC pocket watch from my grandfather. As you see, I've been collecting the Memovox for quite a while. For some of these pieces, I've been looking for years, and what is still missing is a Polaris. Now, I'm thinking about adding a piece for everyday use. Of course, I'm thinking about a Rolex, Explorer 2, or a Zenith Daytona. A Sub or a Sea Dweller are in my mind as well, but there, I would rather buy a Plexi version as you know, good vintage watches are difficult to find. A 5513 for my birth year would be great. Of course, I love the Speedmaster, but I have the following dilemma. If you're going to buy a Speedmaster, of course it has to be a professional moon watch. If I go for a moon watch, I want a vintage one with the 321 movement. And if you are searching for a vintage moon watch, maybe a 105.012. You want to be all original. And those fuckers are so difficult to find. I'm also very attracted to the Royal Oak. I'd love to have a 15202 Jumbo or a Royal Oak uh, Chronograph. Maybe when I turn 40 in two years. Of course, I also love Patek, but this project has to wait a bit. My favourites are the 5960, 5205. Taking Nautilus, it would be a 5726 for me. This is my Grail watch. I also want a Reverso someday, but this is not on the radar right now. The sweet spot for me would be a 1931 in yellow gold with a chocolate dial. So what would you do in my position? Go for a steel Rolex as an everyday watch, or should I buy a Polaris tribute version to continue my Jaeger Culture collection? I'm also thinking about a Jaeger Culture vintage chrono, also a beautiful watch. What do you think I should add next? Greetings from Austria, your friend Christian. Well done, Christian. What a beautiful, beautiful collection there. And it just goes to show you so many people can have such a... Uh, this is such a, a very, very top-heavy Jaeger Le Coultre Memovox type collection. He's got Master Marine. He's got so many cool pieces here. And uh, it's, it's, it's quite... I'm, I'm quite impressed. That's a very, very impressive collection. What would be my, my advice there? Look, look, these are, you raise some very valid points. And I would have to say, if you're going to go for a, a steel Daytona, it'd have to be the Zenith to tie in with this collection. I would say, look, it depends what you really want. I think some bargains in, in the, the Rolex steel range would be sapphire pre-ceramic or pre-42 in the case of the explorer 2 i i would really say to you you could you could some great pieces the rolex explorer 2 a little bit under the radar your collection is sort of under the radar this is an enthusiast collection um i'd say a royal oak hey they're big money royal oak's a great piece the Pateks, you, you've hit, you, you, you're very, very knowledgeable. What would I go for if I was in your position? Well, that is an extremely good question. I would probably say, look, looking at your collection there, I think you'd have to get a Reverso. I'd be going 
maybe not a tribute. I'd go for a Reverso Grand. Get like a Grand Date like I've got. That's such a wonderful, powerful piece. I think you're so Jago La Coltra strong there. That's something, something you should continue working on. That is a fantastic collection. What would I buy? Look. My honest opinion is, if, if it was me, you're asking the question, a daily, daily wearer, I'd probably go for an 861, like a 1990s Omega Speedmaster, Man on the, on the Moon. Man on the fucking moon. Uh, that's probably a good everyday piece. Uh, if you wanted some Rolex, I'd go for an Explorer 2. I'd uh, possibly go, in your case here, let's be a little bit quirky, go for a 16550 Explorer 2. That's sort of the intermediate model. Maybe a 16800 sub, just to be a little bit, you know, off, off center. Off center, because your collection is, it's a fantastic collection, a lot of effort, a lot of thought. Very lucky to have that beautiful collection there. I love it to death. And uh, who, whoever says I keep saying the same watches over and over again. You've got a great collection there. I love it. The Jega La Coltra. That's, a, that's really a cool, cool collection. So um, I, I would possibly say, look, if you ask me what would I get as an everyday wearable piece, I'd either go Amiga Speedmaster Man on the Moon from the 80s with an 861 movement. Very good buying. You know, you'd be looking at about 3 US for that sort of piece there. If you wanted to go Rolex, I'd probably go a little bit, you know, a little bit odd key there. I reckon a 16550 or a 16800 Submariner. I reckon that would be super cool. Great collection. Great promise there. Please stay in touch, Christian. I love the collection. I'd like to see what you do. But, um, hey, there's so many great arguments you, you raise there. Uh, I'd Look, look, at the end of the day... Can you go wrong with any of those choices? I'm Archibald Chesterfield III. This has been a paid review for Christian. Tell me what you nasty vinyl cheap fuckers think of that. Nice one, Archie. Great collection. We specialize in the repair of Rolex and Patek Philippe watches. We've been doing the same thing for more than 25 years. We have a Rolex technician certified by Rolex who actually used to work for the company for many years, like if we do in the work on the factory. We completely disassemble the watch and we put it to work, like brand new condition. When you get a pre-owned watch, it's like if you get in a brand new unit. The only difference is the money.